Hi, I'm John McAuliffe, Chief Marketing Officer of VFM Leonardo, and welcome to the VTV channel. VTV is a weekly series of interviews with industry experts on the latest topics in travel e-business, and specifically online merchandising practices that help hoteliers extract more value out of their online presence. As always, we encourage you to email us at vtv at vfmleonardo.com to suggest topics that you would like us to cover in future episodes. Today, I'm joined by Jean-Francois Murier, founder and CEO of Revpar Guru. Revpar Guru's Yield Dynamic Price Engine is an integrated revenue management and pricing solution for the hotel industry. Jean-Francois's background is in finance, pricing and technology, and revenue management. Jean-Francois, thank you for joining us on VTV and welcome. Thank you, thank you very, very much, uh, John, for the opportunity. Uh, Jean-Francois, we're talking about uh, how hotels can optimize uh, their conversions by differentiating themselves uh, online. Today, specifically, we'd like to talk about the role of uh, reviews or guest reviews, if you will, in optimizing uh, conversions. Um, it's no secret that guests are inevitably going to post uh, reviews about a hotel online. And uh, as all hoteliers have probably experienced, some of these are good, some of them are bad, and some of them um, are somewhere in between. Many hoteliers struggle with how to deal with guest reviews. Uh, from the studies I've read, it seems that although reading reviews has become a part of the travel planning process, they aren't as influential on booking decisions as other factors, particularly visual content. Jean-Francois, what is your opinion on the impact reviews have on hotel booking decisions? I would say a pretty big impact. Uh, actually, what we found is that most of the time, the, 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 you know, in a couple, uh, the person that is going to be booking is going to be uh, the wife. And the wife is particularly, you know, that is looking in all the details, uh, well, whether there's going to be a spa, whether there's going to be, you know, the location, uh, how it's going to look, and etc. And one of the things that they look at is whether they're, uh, you know, they're going to have an enjoyable time in this resort. Obviously, if the reviews from the consumers are very bad, uh, she's probably or most likely not going to book uh, that uh, specific hotel. So the reviews do have an impact. And, and I think hoteliers should, uh, you know, really look at the reviews and, and, and take it not as a critique, but more as a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by as a gift? Well, it's, it's a gift because the consumer took the time to actually inform the hotel what is wrong with the hotel. Now, in some instances, you're going to have, uh, you know, you're going to have, uh, you know, consumers who are going to come very tired and they miss their flight and, uh, and they're going to be in a bad mood no matter what. And they're going to write a bad review uh, no matter what. But you do have, uh, you know, the majority of the reviews that actually indicate and give you some information. And by this is very important because you need to note and, and the hoteliers need to actually do the work and, and look at the, these reviews and take this as an information on what they need to do to fix and to, to improve their, their hotel and to improve their service. At right, the end of the right. day, it's, it, we're, you know, we're in the service industry. So we should know and we should learn from our consumers what we do wrong. And actually, a lot of these reviews are you know, genuine and they teach us something. Certainly, uh, hoteliers can use reviews uh, for their operational um, uh, issues and to fix problems. And, and, and uh, I'm not sure that we'd get an argument from a hotelier that would say that that wasn't a good way of, of fixing what they could fix. Um, but from a sales and marketing perspective, you know, I've spoken to many hoteliers um, who don't like to use reviews on their website or promote their TripAdvisor rating because they're afraid of getting bad reviews and having those reviews read by, um, by consumers. How do you respond to these people? Well, you, 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 when I used to work at different hotels, uh, we took actually, uh, uh, you know, instead of having a, a reactive action, we took the proactive action to uh, go back to the consumer and uh, publicly go back on, uh, on uh, you know, TripAdvisor and, uh, and, and, and write uh, a counter to, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to, to the problems. It, it's a little bit like, you know, right now in the news, you have this uh, Toyota problem. And Toyota now is being basically killed because they basically have or trying to have their eyes wide shut. 
If you do so, you're going to be killed by consumers. The, the, the best action to do is you come to the fore and you react and, and you actually talk uh, to the consumers that actually were not very happy and, and, and you take action. And, and that's the best way actually to, uh, to take care of these reviews. You need to be proactive about it and you need to be honest about it. And if you try to deny the, 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 you know, these, uh, these reviews, it's not going to play in your favor in the long term. And in the long term, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt the hotel. Uh, Jean-Francois, over the series of our last uh, couple of episodes, we've talked about those different factors that um, uh, can differentiate a hotel uh, on something other than price point. We talked about how page position on OTAs um, uh, impacts conversion, uh, and we've talked about how richer visual content uh, impacts uh, conversion. Um, do reviews uh, or those hotels that have uh, more favorable reviews than bad reviews, does that impact, have you seen that quantitatively through your uh, revenue management models, have you seen how that impacts conversion uh, on, uh, online? Well, I, some of the examples I would give you is some hotels who are, you know, uh, you know four star rated and they have a review, uh, let's say on Expedia, which has a review on five, uh, different OTAs that have a review on 10. Uh, but it's all the same, you know, concepts. Uh, they have a review of, let's say, two out of five. Uh, they basically don't get booked. And uh, so the impact is dramatic. Whereas the other hotels, which are, you know, four stars, they have a review of four to 4.5. Uh, when you have a review which is 4.2, 4.3, or 4.5, the difference is not going to be that massive. But if your reviews are two, uh, 2.0 on Expedia, for instance, and the other guys who are in the same star rating, they have a 4 and a 4.5, I can guarantee you that uh, your, your, your conversion is going to be much, much, much lower. Right. So it certainly sounds like um, hoteliers need to focus not just on um, uh, the revenue um, uh, rates and the rates that they have available online, but they need to focus on, on a number of other factors that can help uh, optimize their conversions online. Certainly, um, uh, positive reviews uh, that give them uh, a much higher review rating uh, is one of those factors. Uh, visual content and having that content available to travel shoppers uh, is a second. And uh, as we talked about in our first episode with you, um, the page position, strategic page position, uh, not just the, the, the first um, uh, line item on the first page, um, is, uh, is another factor that can help uh, hoteliers extract more value out of their presence on OTAs over and above just lowering their prices. That, that's correct. I mean, if, uh, if I was to put an order of, of, uh, of uh, effect in, in terms of uh, which is most effective and least effective, the number one thing that will be the most effective is basically increased supply. By this, you know, like any economist, you know, it's supply and demand. You increase the supply, you're going to get more people coming in. So that means get more OTAs. Sign with as many OTAs as possible. The other factor of signing with other OTAs is that you kind of blend in the margin. Uh, the margins of some of the OTAs is 25%, but a lot of them also have a, a margin, uh, you know, basically a, a price you have to pay of, of 15 or 10%. So by having more, you can blend in also the price that you pay. And you also increase the supply. Uh, fact number two, well, how good you look and how well you sell yourself. In other words, you need to really present yourself properly and not show your ugliest wound. But of course, you know, present yourself in the best possible light and offer an atmosphere and offer, you know, a, a dream. But keep it within the reality because, uh, you know, it, it's there. Every single place has its hearts. Every single hotel has their story and their hearts. And, and number three, uh, the reviews. It's, uh, it's not something that you have to, uh, you know, keep uh, your eyes on all the time. But I think, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these balls you got to keep in the air to make sure that you don't have a review of two when all the other guys have a review of four and four and a half. So uh, all of these factors uh, come into play in this, in this order, I believe. Right. Jean-Francois, thank you very much for sharing your insights with us. Um, uh, great information and knowledge for our audience to... Um, help extract more value uh, out of their presence online. So we thank you for uh, joining us and sharing with us. Thank you very much, John. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.
To all the viewers out there, be sure to post your comments on this episode of VTV and subscribe to our feed to receive more valuable insights from industry experts.